Um, I'm addicted to NixOS and also old technologies like Xorg and uh, things like that. Uh, I work at a company called RJG from America and uh, I mean, I guess we're also global, but uh, headquarters is in Michigan and we're in the manufacturing space, which if, uh, if the JPEG was on the screen, what you would see is like uh, a profile pic of part of a molding cell. So molding machines can be very large and uh, you know, not everyone likes plastic. So our company works to reduce scrap and the picture shows like a big pile of plastic just on the floor uh, being wasted. So that's, that's what uh, we try to do. Uh, we don't do many deployments. We don't do containers yet. We don't do all this sophisticated cloud. Uh, IoT to us is like uh, physical devices, you know, like analog sensors uh, at, the, at the machine. And uh, so like we, we came up with, and, and I do want to give credit to uh, a lot of the good parts of this uh, to a bunch of different collaborators, uh, our internal teams, uh, we had NumTide come in and help us with a lot of the major architecture decisions, uh, and we're very happy with them. Um, but so, you know, say you do like five deployments a year. Uh, what we want is like one system, and here, so we've got our single uh, NixOS image, and we want to deploy it to all our sites, right? So we have. I don't know, however many client sites we have distributed wherever they are around the world, uh, everyone's running this stuff locally because, you know, it's hardware. You, you, you plug sensors right into the, into the system, uh, you read pressure, temperature, et cetera. All that data goes up to our data historian uh, at the, at the uh, individual plant level. So, uh, you know, not every plant is in the same time zone, right? Like, there's a whole earth, there's many time zones. If you're familiar with time zones, you're probably like, yeah, time sucks <laughs> on computers. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't wanna have a site in Wisconsin uh, having times displayed not in their own local time, right? So, um, the system that we came up with is kind of like for templating NixOS images. So again, like we, we have essentially one with a slight asterisk, essentially one image. Um, it's actually different per like platform, you know, so it's like all the, uh, again, Nix packages, images. Um, uh, thank you to everyone who worked on all that. Uh, so we have like VMware, uh, uh, that's not the right shape, but anyways, you know, uh, QCOW, ISO, all, all sorts of stuff that, uh, whatever you can generate as a NixOS image, uh, Hyper-V, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you can generate a container. Uh, again, we're not actively doing that, but we could be um, from the same code base. And so what that gives us is that our, uh, our release structure is just uh, one NixOS closure. So, or, well, a set of them per platform type, but uh, anyways, it becomes more easy for us as the ops team to keep it all together because the ops team is very small. So we don't want like everyone to have a different NixOS path. Uh, that, that would make it uh, harder to debug. How am I doing on time here? So um, the templating system is, of course, Bash, as is all of everything underneath. Uh, and so, you know, the, the client gets to uh, get a representation of this interface. So this is the static part of the configuration. And uh, these little shapes are the hooks for each thing that can be configured. So there's a hook for setting your local time, right? And it just calls a Bash script that puts the file on the file system. Right, so uh, they get an interface, they get a little ISO, and it goes through, uh, what do you call it, cloud in it? Um, I really wanted to show like code and uh, did not fully get to that point yet, but uh, we do have, I think my boss, Doug, gave me permission, right, Doug, 
to publish uh, all of our source code, all of our Nix code. Uh, I can't publish our application code. I can't publish our firmware. Um, but I can publish all of our Nix code that, that's not uh, internal infrastructure. So I just have to like restructure. And if anyone knows how to, um, what is it called? Do one of the Git history rewriting tools. Like, come see me afterwards and help me. <laughs> and then, then the talk. Uh, then you can see the actual code faster. I mean, it's not great code. Again, it's it's Bash um, all the way down. But um, the activation happens uh, with with this little loop. Um, and I mean, you could even extend it. So you could even, uh, like, hopefully in the future, I'll get to this point where you can. Uh, take the ISO or, or whatever format of data you have that, that populated uh, your custom template and you know just get a little like loop going so that you can just change it. Um, I mean right now they have to make a new ISO and there's uh, you know many many clicks but it could just be integrated but yeah so that's uh, adapting to constraints that's that's it. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for watching this and if you have any if you want to talk afterwards, I can show you code or talk about more of that idea. Uh, just find me somewhere. Thank you, Nick. <laughs>